I think CPI or FOMC is going to put a top on this rally. Make sure you stay all the way to the end because I'm going to show you some internals of reasons why I think that we are topping out and why we're going to have a nice correction on NASDAQ and S&P 500, but an even bigger correction on NASDAQ because we've had an even bigger rise. A lot of ratios are too stretched. I think that we're going to see more weakness in NASDAQ compared to S&P 500 in the coming four weeks. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to talk about why we're just going to have a, about a 5% correction between June 15th and July 15th, that month there. If you're looking to become a consistently profitable trader, you're definitely going to hit the subscribe button. I personally trade ES and NASDAQ futures, which is S&P 500 futures and NASDAQ futures. Before we dive into it, if you have appreciated my videos in the past, just hit that thumbs up button so I know you like when I create these type of videos. Personally on this channel, I do weekly updates and bi-weekly updates on the market and the trades I'm in. So if you want to see more of that, definitely hit that subscribe button and thumbs up button. Without further do let's dive into the charts right now we're on spx on the daily chart we did get an ugly topping candle that came in on friday where we opened up pushed up and then sold off once we hit that 4320 area on spx which is also 432 on spy some resistance there and you'll see on the es this is the futures contract we we had a we had a futures contract rollover so now this is the september contract and because of that there's this huge gap up but on SPX and actually on the ES contract, it, we don't have this huge gap up. If you take a look at ES on the June contract, this is how we are actually trading. But on the current contract, since we have the rollover, we have this gap. So it shows us at, at 43.50, showing that we pushed up to 43.67. So now moving forward, when I when I refer to numbers on ES and NASDAQ, I'm gonna to refer to the new futures rollover price. One thing to note is that doesn't mean that we went up this much because SP 500 is actually down here. We didn't have this drastic push up to 43.50 yet. Now I want to show share what I think is going to happen in this uh, coming few weeks here. One thing I wanted to point your attention to is we didn't actually break this August high here at 43.24 and I think they did this on purpose. We have CPI coming out Tuesday, June 13th, 8.30 a.m. That's typically a day we either have a massive spike up or a big drop down, right? Obviously if inflation is continuing to go down, we're gonna have a short squeeze and take out those highs. If we do have a tick up on inflation, obviously we'll get a rapid drop. Wednesday, the next day is FOMC. So FOMC, we're gonna see if they're gonna rate hike or they're gonna pause. Right now there's about a 75% chance of a pause. So basically the pricing in a pause. If inflation comes out a little hotter, then that means that we're gonna have a rate raise likely instead of a pause, and that'll put a lot of pressure on NASDAQ and tech stocks. But we have to obviously wait and see. I don't know what's gonna happen with inflation at FOMC, I'm not gonna guess that, but I think the mo what would make the most sense they didn't take out this august high so i what would make the most sense is them spiking up and taking out this august high before going lower and to me that means another push up tuesday from cpi or fomc and then we that that puts in a top so personally i'm leaning towards a top being put in on s&p 500 and nasdaq either tuesday or wednesday of this week basically S&P 500, we push up to the 43.50 area, which is about another 1% up. And then on NASDAQ, we push up to about the 15,000 area, and then we roll over and we start trending down from the, the middle of this week. So like, by like Wednesday, Thursday, until July 15th, I think that's when we start trending down and we start getting some fib retracements in the NASDAQ and we start pushing down to about 4,200 at least on S&P 500. So that's currently what I'm doing. I did scalp some longs on uh, ES, but now I'm just, I'm flat right now and I'm waiting because I'm gonna be looking for short soon. First target I would like to short on ES would be just getting above this 4,340 area, getting to 4,350 up to 4,400. That's where I'd be liking some shorts, but I'm actually gonna be focusing on NASDAQ. So on the NASDAQ, We've been really strong, and I think we're gonna get this at least 38% fib retracement down to about 13,730 by July 15th. If you just take a look at NASDAQ on the weekly chart, you'll see we've been going straight up essentially, and we haven't had a big pullback ever since those March lows when we had the banking issues. So if you just drop fib retracement, I think we're gonna get a little bit more of a push up closer to 15,000. So we drop fib retracement from there, 38% brings us just below uh, 13,800 getting down to about 13,700. And if we wanted to see a real significant pullback, which is normal, a 50% retracement uh, is very normal. That means we can get down to about 13,400. So personally, I am targeting 13,800 to 13,400 at some point by the middle of July. But at minimum, I'm really expecting that uh, 13,730 target getting to that 38% fib retracement. If it's really strong, then it only pulls back to 38 fib. If it's normal, like a normal retracement is a 50% retracement and a big retracement, which also happens quite often is the 618. I don't think we'll get down to 13,000 on NASDAQ. I think that we might just get down to the three, uh, 0.38 because it's just been so strong. 
but it would make sense for us to come down to these fair value gaps here uh, right one right here my mouse is and then another one obviously right here just above the 38 fib retracement on the weekly chart for nasdaq i'm looking at a push up to 15,000 early in the week but by the end of the week uh, getting back down and then just basically trending down all the way to about mid-july finding a bottom about mid-july and then starting to trend back up again that's just something i'm looking at for the nasdaq this is totally healthy totally possible but it's good for a you know a good 1000 point retracement on nasdaq and if you trade futures you know there's 20 dollars per point on the nasdaq so if you catch a nasdaq short with 1000 points that is a twenty thousand dollar trade usd just with one contract however obviously shorts are extremely risky if you just look from left to right obviously it's very bullish price price action what you really want to look for is a breakdown of the structure of these previous weekly lows a push back up into those 14,500 area and then that's when you want to look for short based on price action what i really want to see is a break of these recent swing lows and then a retracement back up so as an example let's say we squeeze up uh, monday tuesday into cpi we get to that 15,000 area and then we get rejected and we kind of sell off into the end of week and we end the week down to 14,200 right realistically the best probability short you, what you want to see is these lows these swing lows taken out so now say we break below about 14,200 once we're below 14,200 what we really want to see is maybe we get an extension right and then we trade back up and we get the retracement either to 14,250 or we get a fib retracement from the lows so from the high to the low once we've bottomed, you want to find a FIB retracement to about 50%. 50% is typically a good entry. And then, ideally, we look for shorts at about the 50%. That's when we enter the short there. Because then, at least you have a high where you can set your risk parameter. So then you can set the highs to 15,100. And then you can start targeting the, the targets I had down, which is about uh, 13,700. So at this point, this is an actual better risk reward trade as opposed to shorting a high, right? Because high can always go higher. But once we get this break of structure at the 14,250 area, we want to wait until we get a pullback back up into the either 50% or the 618. If I wanted to be even more patient with my entry, then I would wait till we got up to the 618. Once we retrace up into the 618, that's when I would begin shorting. And then I can keep my stop loss tighter. 470 stop with about 960 point gain. And then at this point, at least it is now a two to one risk reward ratio because we waited for the break of structure of the swing lows on the daily. Then we waited for fib retracement up to the 618. That's when we want to get in short, put the stop just above all the highs, and then target our actual fib retracement that we had down here. This is now going to get a little crowded. But if you draw the fib retracement, remember our target was down here at about uh, 13,800 or below. Then we can get our target down there by mid-July. And this is a proper trade with proper risk management. So this is basically something I'm looking for, something I wanna see. However, what I am gonna do, I plan to actually get in about 30% of my short position on a spike. So any spike we do get, if we get to 15,000, I'm putting in 30% of my position. And then I'm gonna be watching, once I get more confirmation, then I can add more but I wanna get in a certain portion on that spike because things are gonna show you are showing that we've either topped on the NASDAQ or we are about to top. Now on ES, the S&P 500, I'm not as confident in shorts. I don't think there'll be as big of a sell-off because we're not as stretched on the ratios I'm looking at. We had big sell-offs in banks and that's what caused all this consolidation. But if banks have bottomed and we start pushing up again, then that means that ES will not likely sell off or pull back as far. And we might only get down to 4240 on this new ES futures contract. And that's exactly what I'm anticipating. So again, I think we push up, let's say on this futures contract, we might get to 4400, which basically means 4350 or 4360 on SPX. And then I think that we're gonna push down and that's when we'll get down to mid-July. I think we'll get down to about the 4240 area possibly down to 4,200, uh, down to the support here, bounce from 4,210, 4,200, and then continue back up. Basically, we'll look at on ES, but I'm not gonna focus on any shorts on ES. Once I get confirmation on NASDAQ, I'm gonna look for shorts on NASDAQ. ES have more of a long bias because of the reasons I stated before. This is QQQ divided by SPY, so this is the ratio of NASDAQ to S&P 500, and previous times, every time we get up at this 0.8 area, it marks significant tops, or at least significant pullbacks in the NASDAQ. And you can see the arrows I have here. These are sell-offs that happened. We have one about the summer of 2020. 
We had a 6.3% sell-off in two weeks once we got to the 0.8 ratio. We pushed up again to the 0.84 ratio. We had a 14% sell-off in three weeks. That was near the end of 2020. Other sell-off here happened at the beginning of 2021. We had an 11.5% sell-off in three weeks. And then another one here was in October of 2021 where we had an 8.3% sell-off in four weeks. Here were the all-time highs in S&P 500 and NASDAQ and we had a 7.4% sell-off in two weeks and then obviously a lot more sell-off where we, we sold off 30% all throughout this time on the NASDAQ into uh, 2023. The ratio bottom in 2023 and ever since the beginning of the year, tech has been extremely strong. If you just look at the ratio, the ratio went up really high and we just got a 4% sell-off in four weeks and then even higher, boom, now, we back, now we're back to 0.84 with no significant pullbacks. That's a massive red flag. Every time we got up to these levels, look at the sell-offs we have. We had 6.3%, 14, 11, eight, seven, but this whole rise, we didn't have any significant pullbacks of 5% or greater. So because of that, it increases the likelihood that now, if we were to have a sell-off, it would be a larger magnitude of at least 6%, but somewhere closer to eight to 10% in the coming few weeks. And eight to 10% points to about a 1,000 point sell-off to 1,200 point sell-off in the NASDAQ in the coming four weeks. So that's one thing that's really have has my eyes on you know, if if I'm if there was one thing I would I would short, it would be Nasdaq over S P 500 because S P 500 could be stronger on the downside. But obviously, we have to wait for confirmation for shorts. Here's one other time for reference that Q Q Q ratio went up so extreme, and it was actually through the COVID crash. So in 2019, before the COVID crash, the ratio went from 0.65 to 0.85. But as it was going through that, there was a 33% sell-off in the Nasdaq. There was a 6.5% correction. There was a 14% correction after it got to 0.85. We're at the same point right now where we went from 0.65 to 0.84, but we didn't have any of these corrections. So this one went all the way through there and we had those corrections on Nasdaq, but we didn't have any corrections. So we're... We're just due for an, a solid 10% correction before continuing higher on the NASDAQ. Another thing pointing to why I believe in more weakness for the NASDAQ over the S&P 500. And here it is one more time. Ratio went from 0.68 to 0.84 with no major pullback. So because of that, just higher probability of us getting that real 10% correction. Here is small caps divided by the NASDAQ and the ratio is at all time lows. And the only time we were this low is the 2000 tech bubble crash. I showed this in the previous video in reverse where I just showed the ratio of, of NASDAQ to Russell. This is the opposite. This is just pointing to why if you're looking to go long, honestly, the small caps are better risk reward to go long in than NASDAQ. You can see even on Friday, we were down on the Russell, but we were up on the NASDAQ. So this ratio is so oversold and it looks to be bottoming. So if you were to go, if I was to look for longs, I would honestly be looking more to long Russell. And I did take some long on, on the Russell actually Friday. So holding some, some small size long Russell, looking for shorts on the NASDAQ at, at the end of this week. And if you just take a look, I, you can go ahead and back test this yourself. Every time we got down here, there was actually a really big sell off that happened in the NASDAQ. You can go ahead and look at that. And then let's scroll to the left and see the last time the ratio was at 0.1. So if we go all the way back, we're now at 2017, we're at 2015, 2014, 2012. It's way up there. You can see down to 2000. Here is down to 2000 now. Only other time we got down this low. You see this drop? Again, I went over this previous video. This is March 27th of 2000. The only time the ratio was this low was March 27th of 2000. If you go back to the NASDAQ, right here is where March 27th is of 2000. And we're at the same point in the ratio as that date. So that if you just see what happened, we topped that week. And then in the next three weeks, we went down 35%. Like I said in that last video on Sunday, I don't think we're gonna fall 35%. I'm just saying, I believe we are due for a significant correction in the NASDAQ. And then I think that the S&P 500 will hold up more. And then I also think that the Russell will hold up more as well. Russell is, is in my opinion, the best long opportunity NASDAQ is the best short opportunity in the coming four weeks. VIX took out another new weekly lower low. Every time the VIX makes a new weekly lower low and takes out the previous week's lows, we typically get about a 100 point sell off on SP 500. So again, we're looking for about SP 500 to fall from 4,300 to potentially 4,200 at some point this week. We'll see if it happens, but NASDAQ will be even weaker, so I think that we'll end the week down for NASDAQ. I just don't know how much. If you've been here on the channel in previous videos, we've been paying attention to the NYA, NYSE composite, which is the total stock market. Every time we get this divergence where we make lower highs and lower lows on NYA while making higher highs on SPX, 
we get a significant top and a significant sell-off. So it's hard to see right now, but you can see we've been making higher highs on SPX and then on NYA, lower highs. However, one thing to note was this past week, something changed because we broke above the trend line. But to me, this still means it's intact because we're still having lower highs on NYA while having higher highs on SPX. It's not like we broke all the way, it's not, it's not like we broke back to have equal highs and we got all the way up here. So breath is extremely low while we're pushing up to these highs. Major red flag, because every time we've had these divergences, they've marked significant tops and we've had big sell-offs. Another one pointing back at the all-time high. We turn it down on NYA, and then we turn it up on SPX, boom, sell-off. And you go ahead and backtest this on your charts as well, and you'll see that this happened other times. I haven't been covering the rates much, but I wanted to bring to attention to this. This looks constructive. So either they're faking this out right here and they're just gonna clap it back down by pausing rates, or we're gonna get a surprise rate hike because just look at this price action with the two year. This is extremely bullish. So we, we sold off, right? We chopped around, we based around, and we made higher lows, and then we pushed back up to break structure. Uh, we filled this gap here, and then this week ended very uh, bullishly. This, this looks like it's primed to push up even higher. And if this pushed up higher, this would basically say that we're going to have a rate hike on Wednesday. So either they're faking us out by setting it up very constructively right now to just drop it back down, or uh, this is implying that we're going to have actually another rate hike on Wednesday. And if we did, that would really be the nail in the coffin for the NASDAQ because right now there's a 75% chance of a pause based on what the markets are thinking. So if we got a 25 basis point hike, it would just be a surprise and then NASDAQ would fall because tech stocks get hurt more by rate hikes than uh, than other stocks. As the market thinks that rates are going to keep going higher, then this two-year will go even higher. Same with the 10-year. The 10-year, it looks a little bit weaker, right? But again, it's constructive. So we based and then we pushed up and we've been basing again. So like this, this looks like we're going to push up even higher. Because of that, it, it makes you think that somehow we're going to have a rate hike but it could go both ways. Like they could be just be setting it up to make it look like they're gonna have a right hike, then have the pause and it just collapses it back down. So I'm not reading too much into this. Another signal is uh, fear and greed index. The put to call ratio is at lows, we're at lower lows on the put to call ratio than we were at the February high. You saw what happened there. And then even lower than we were at the August high. So let's just go to August 16th and let's look at February 2nd. February 2nd was a low in put to call ratio and August 16th. Right now, again, there are as little people short as there was February 2nd and August 16th, and actually even less. So typically when that happens, there's like a good rug pull operation. Since no one is short anymore, then it allows the market to fall. Only at extremes, because you could argue, obviously, when put-to-call ratio is low, that means that there are a lot of calls, so it will push the market up. But when we get to really big extremes of that ratio, that means that there's no one with downside protection. And because of that, it allows the market to fall because at that point, there's no one left to go long. This was the week of August 16th when the put to call ratio was at its lowest. We just sold off directly. This was the week again, February 2nd, where the put to call ratio was at its lowest. Boom, sold off directly. Right now, this is the week, put to call ratio was at its lowest and actually slightly lower than this time and slightly lower than this time. What's likely to happen? Fall back down at least the support here at 4,200. Same on NASDAQ, what's likely to happen? Uh, same as NASDAQ, uh, August 15th, put to call ratio was at its lowest. We had a good 12% sell-off. This other time here, put to call ratio was at its lowest. We had a good 8.5% sell-off. Right now, put to call ratio is lower than those times. Could have a good 8 to 10% sell-off. Come down to the support here at 13,300, 13,400. But again, my first target is uh, 13,700, which is about 1,000 points down. So what did you think of the video? Did you did you like the ratios? Did you like what we showed here? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. Let me know what you trade. To recap, I think in the next four weeks, it'll be a better risk reward to be looking for shorts on NASDAQ. And then I think it'll be a better risk reward to look for longs on small caps, which is the Russell. SCB 500, I think will have a, a pullback, but I think that it'll hold up better than the NASDAQ. That's basically what I'm thinking. You know what I'm going to be trading. I'm going to be focusing on NASDAQ on the downside bias. I'm going to be focused on the Russell for the upside bias. That's going to conclude this video. Give this video a thumbs up if you appreciate it. Subscribe for more videos just like this. Thanks so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video coming out Wednesday night because I'm going to post a video after FOMC Wednesday night. So again, be on the lookout. Safe trading, Tuesday CPI, Wednesday FOMC, Wednesday night. I'll have that video out for you.